once that you have um, completed your experiment, you're gonna record all your data. While you are completing the experiment, you're gonna record all your data on a table. And just remember that we were discussing that in classes, that you have to create a, a chart, a way to organize your data. Once that you have all that quantitative data, what are you gonna do with that data? If you look at your table, are you gonna be able to see the relationship between the two variables? The answer is no. And that's why with that quantitative data, we build or we create a graph. And why a graph, Ms. Ramos? Why do we have to create a graph? Because a graph is helping you to visualize the relationship between the independent and the dependent variable. That's the purpose of a graph, just to help you visualize the relationship between the independent and the dependent variable. In this video, we are going to talk about different type of graph. Especially in this class, in the chemistry class, we are going to use line graph. We are not going to use pi uh, graph or bar graph because, no, over the, when you use um, a pi graph or a bar graph, you don't see the relationship clearly. Consequently, we are going to concentrate our attention on line graph. As I was explaining in the introduction video, we have different type of graph. Circle graph, that is also known as pie charts. Then we have the bar graph, and then we have the line graph. And we're gonna concentrate all our attention on this type of graph. Before moving to the interpretation of line graph, I would like also to discuss, like briefly, the other two type of graph. For example, this is a circle graph. When are you gonna use a circle graph? when you want to easily displace information. When you want to easily displace information that contains percent, then you're gonna use a circle graph. Circle graph, can you see clearly what is the independent and dependent variable? The answer is no, and that's why I was telling you at the beginning of the, the video that we're gonna concentrate our attention on line graph. Okay, so, but just keep that in mind. If you are conducting an investigation and what you are reporting is percent, are you gonna use a line graph? No, you're gonna use a, a pie chart or a circle graph. Second type of graph that we have here in this presentation, bar graph. When are you gonna use a bar graph? You're gonna use a bar graph when you want to compare. Yeah, I don't know if you remember that when you were taking physical science with me, the first experiment that you were conducting was the paper towel experiment in which you were looking for the best brand of paper towel. The brand of paper towel that was able to absorb the most amount of water. Okay, if for, for that experiment you were using a bar graph because here on the x-axis you were graphing the independent variable was which was the the brand of the paper towel and then you were recording the milliliter of water that they were collecting why were you using a bar graph because you were comparing all the brands to see which one was the best so just keep that in mind one more time circle or pie charts when you want to graph percent board graph when you are comparing okay comparing different categories in there you're gonna use a board graph miss ramos when are we gonna use a line graph you're gonna use a line graph when you want to analyze the relationship between variables analyze and as you can see over here you have an example of a line graph because a line graph is it could be a line it could be a curve okay but in general they are called line graph 
because you are plotting information in there and they could see every intersection of the independent with the dependent variable is called markers in there you're gonna connect connect all the dots and then you're gonna be able to create your line graph now why line graph because you want to analyze the relationship between variables see what do you mean by that Ms. Ramos that you want to analyze the relationship between variables and you have an example over here in this example over here you have on the x-axis the degrees in the north latitude okay and as you can see see all your data see is located in that area and if you trace a line many of the points they are gonna land on that line it would call that the line of best fit okay because you can use that line to make predictions predictions for the futures now for the future as you can see the relationship between the independent and the dependent variable as you are increasing increasing the independent variable what is happening to the dependent variable see is decreasing decreasing as well and you cannot see that you cannot see that in, in a bar graph or you cannot see that in a pie graph you're going to be able to see the relationship when you're using a line graph see in this case the line of, of best fit is going to have a negative slope meaning that if you want to analyze it see let's say that you want to um analyze how the degrees are affecting the annual temperature you can say that as the degrees are increasing what's gonna happen to the average annual temperature is gonna decrease over here you have you have that in fahrenheit see and this is the origin over here of the coordinating system let's say that you want to increase the the degrees in the north latitude was gonna happen once that you go over 80 degrees what's gonna happen to to the temperature is going to fall below below the the origin of the coordinating system and see in that area over here see using the line of best fit you're gonna be able to make prediction it does it that's why we use line graph on the other example that you have over here see same variable on the x-axis but now you have the the snowfall okay but now you have a line of best feet see that is going up and if you look at your data plugging there if you are increasing the degrees what is happening to the annual snowfall is increasing as well see E, e, that information see can be drawn only after you analyze a line graph e, that's why we're gonna look, use line graph because in when you have a line graph it's gonna be easy for you to establish the relationship between the variables for example over here in the example that you have over here you are graphing over here age of the children and then you have the number of teens see so from 13 all the way through 17 if you analyze this segment over here of your line graph what can you say about that behavior that as the age of the teenagers are increasing you're gonna have more kids in in that in that range in there it, 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 see in, in between 13 and 17 you're gonna have more kids now what happened over here see that the line is going down 17 through 18 what is the tendency see the amount of teen is gonna decrease see the amount of teen with cell phone is gonna decrease because you have to look at the title that you have over here it's gonna decrease and that see that description is giving you the relationship between variables when you are analyzing a line graph you have to pay attention to three things okay that's your first step pay attention to the title of the graph 
pay attention to the independent variable that always is going to be graphed on the x-axis and pay attention to the dependent variable which always is going to be graphed on the y-axis okay so one more time three things that you have to pay attention when you're reading a line graph title independent variable dependent one okay as you can see over here the independent variable is the month of the year what is the dependent variable the number of cars sold because the title is the car sale over a period of time okay if you read here the information is over the period of six months so the entire year is not covered here in your graph by looking at your graph take this into account i'm not answering any question yet okay i'm just analyzing my graph by looking at your graph what is the information that you can draw from there first january all the way through march what happened to the sale okay went down sale which is related to the title and why the sale went down because the number of cars that were sold went down see that went down now from march all the way through may what happened to the car sale went up okay because the number of cars that were sold in average it went up and what happened after that may to june it went down one more time okay now the graph is not giving me information about the cost that is causing the number of cars sold uh, going or uh, go up or down it's just giving me the numbers quantitative information another information that you can get from the graph without trying to answer the question okay here in january how many cars were sold see if you want to find that information you go the way up until the line and then you go the way to the right 50 okay february all the way through the line and all the way through the left 30 okay march all the way through the line 20 it that's how you get information from your graph when you want to know the exact number you will okay given the independent variable you will go up all the way through the line and then you will look to your left but let's say that you want to know what was the month in which i don't know 20 cars were sold since the dependent variable was given you will come over here and then you will move to the right until you touch the line and then you will go down if that's the way that you look for information one more time and now i'm making a generalization if the independent variable is given and you want to look for the dependent you will go up all the way through your line and then you will go the way through the left but if the dependent variable is given and you want to find the independent variable value that corresponds with that dependent value then you will look for the number here on the y-axis you will move to the right all the way through your line and then you will go down to read now i'm going to start uh, answering the questions that i have over here you say how many cars were sold in april clue april and then i'm going to put that over here april you know that the month of the year is the independent variable so this is the independent variable is given many cars you know that the number of cars is the dependent one so this is a given you are looking for this i'm gonna apply my strategy april all the way up i'm going to all the way through the line and then i'm gonna move all the way through the left and that's my answer how many cars were sold 40 40 cards were sold in april 
Okay, now question number two. If this is a strategy that you can use to look for information, okay, in which two months were the same number of cars sold? Okay, so you, you are looking for independent variable given information about the dependent one. Okay, so in which two months were the same number of cars sold? And I'm going to use the same approach that I was explaining before. Now, for question number two, they want to find the two months with the same number of cars. So, they are given the dependent variable because even though they are not giving you the number, they are giving you the information that during those two months the same number of cars were sold and i'm going to start here at the top okay i'm going to start here at the top because see that's the beginning of my graph and if if i move all the way through the right i'm gonna find in my line graph i'm gonna find another point another point in my line graph that correspond with 50 cards. Now I'm going down. Do I have a month in there? Yes. Okay, over here. See, do I have all oh, that number of cards all corresponds to a given month? Yes. Okay, Miss Ramos, but the same happened. With 40 cards, you have two lines, okay, or you have two points in your line graph that correspond with 40 cards. But when you go down, see, both of them correspond to a given month, and the answer is no. So you cannot use that, okay? And if you look over here, the same at 25. See, you have two points in your line graph that correspond with 25, but when you go down, does that correspond to two given months? If that's the clue in this answer, in this question. So what is the answer for number two? January, and what is the other one? May. In why January and May? Because when you were moving, see, left all the way through the right, See, two points in your, line, in your line graph were situated in that position. And when you went down, you, you were able to match that number with a given month. Okay? So, number three says, what is the difference in number of cars sold in the month of March all the way through June? Okay, March, June, independent variable. And then I'm going to start erasing all of that because you're not going to be able to see that. Okay. Oh my my no, it's not not like that. March and June. Still I have that information in there. Okay, so they are giving me the independent variable. Okay, so March I'm I'm here and June over here. What is the difference in numbers? So in March, okay, I'm here. How many cars were sold? 20. In June, see that? That when you have the independent variable, you go up the way through the line, and then you move all the way through the left. In June, how many cars? 10. So what is the difference between 20 and 10? See, in numbers, 10. So, what can you say about that different that on March, uh, this dealer was selling 10 cars more than in June? Probably cause, because, you know, around this time of the year, many people, they receive the, the income tax refund, okay? But you see, listen, the information is not given, you don't have to write to that conclusion, you see. 
What is the difference in number of cars sold between the month in which the maximum and minimum number of cars were sold? Maximum, minimum. Okay. See? Maximum number of cars. If you can do that, see? Using the point that you have over here too, because remember that on May and January, it was the peak, okay? Peak of the season because the, the dealer was selling uh, a maximum amount of cards. So what is the difference in the number of cards sold between the month in which the maximum number of cards was sold? So the maximum number of cards was 50 over here, minimum was 10. So what is the difference between the maximum number and the minimum? 40 cards. One more time, when you are analyzing a line graph, your first step is to look at the title, independent and dependent. Then try to see the trend that is represented. If the line is going down, that means that as the independent variable is increasing, the dependent is decreasing. But if the line is going up, that means that as the independent is increasing, the dependent is increasing as well. And if you have a horizontal line, that means that there is no variation. This is another example of a line graph. Just keep in mind that I'm talking about a line graph because you're going to have a corresponding so for every independent variable value you're gonna have a corresponding dependent variable value okay so you can have a line or you can have a curve a still we call that a line graph because it's showing the relationship between the dependent and the independent variable now in this graph that you have in front of you Okay, the experimenters, they were um, trying to figure it out if an increase in the temperature is going to affect the amount of time that a frog is going to crack. Okay, just keep in mind that when you're analyzing the line graph, see, your first step is to read the title because it's giving you an idea what they're talking about. Find the independent variable and then find the dependent one. After analyzing this line graph, what is the trend or the pattern that you see here? And look at the the values on the dependent variable. You can say that as the temperature is increasing, since your graph is going up, see, as the temperature is increasing, the number of cracks in one minute are increasing too. So, if the temperature is high and you have a lot of frogs in your backyard, can you expect a lot of cracks? Yes, because according to this study, that's why the data is suggested. Okay, now let's say that you want to look for more specific information. Okay, so at which temperature uh, the frogs they are gonna crack less? You remember, I'm giving you see which temperature they're gonna crack less. You're going to look for the minimum point. Okay, but the minimum point, remember, the number of cracks is the dependent variable. So you're going to start all the way through your left. See? Because in that point, see, is when you have the less number of cracks. And then you're going down because you were looking for the independent variable. At that temperature, they're going to crawl less. Okay? So what is the difference across between 22 degrees Celsius and 32 degrees Celsius. Okay, what is the difference in cracks? Now, you find the number over here, which is 12. The number over here, remember, it go all the way through the left, which is 26. 
and then you subtract that. So you can expect your frog to crack 14 times more per minute if you increase the temperature by 10 degrees. See, if that's the information, information that you are looking for when you are reading a line graph. One more time, see, if the dependent variable is given and you want to find the dependent variable, then you will go up all the way through the line, then you will move all the way through the left, and you will look for that value. But, on the contrary, if the dependent variable is given, you will move all the way through the right, okay, until you meet the line, and then you will go down to find the, the value of the independent variable.